they all ended up dying except for the one, but it was important to me that they were still showing compassion, even though I only had them for a couple of weeks. I was the only home they were ever going to get, so I made sure to take the time, even though ultimately it was harder on me. Seven, which is something I'm sure we all understand, that educating the public is absolutely vital. The cat that's pictured here, her name is Ninja. She was surrendered to the shelter because the owners never stayed her. They had gotten her with vaccines, but they never gave her vaccines. They never took her to the vet. So she ended up getting loose when she went into heat. She was outside for months and then had kittens. And she was, she was surrendered with six other kittens um, and she was completely unvaccinated. We vaccinated her. The kittens were too young to be vaccinated at the time. And again, I took them home. Um, all of the kittens ended up having distemper and they all died. Uh, but mom, mom was okay. She had had one vaccine in the past. We just kept a really close eye on her. Um, but unfortunately, if they would have either spayed her or vaccinated her, or ideally both, she never would have been in this situation. The kittens never would have been in this situation. I never would have been in this situation. And unfortunately, six cats had to lose their lives because she just wasn't educated on how important it is to get your animals to the vet and get them vaccinated or, or get them spayed. And this is kind of a graphic image. Um, placing animals in foster homes saves most lives. The dog that's pictured here, her name is Roxanne, and we picked her up when she was found roaming the streets, um, absolutely emaciated. She was 32 pounds in that picture, and she was an American Pit Bull mix. Um, and the picture at the bottom was her only two months later. She was up to about 70 pounds, and now she's actually overweight. <laughs> but she was fostered by very good friends of mine and then adopted by other very good friends of mine. And this is the type of dog where she absolutely needed to go into a foster home. We could not have worked with her as much as she needed had she stayed in the shelter. So she went with one of the fosters that took most of our animals. They usually had two to three fosters in their house at a time. And she was being fed puppy food. She had to be fed multiple times a day. They worked on training her because she was a little food aggressive. Um, and she did get better about it. but. I can't tell you how many animals would have been euthanized if they weren't fostered. Um, I can tell you for sure, all 20 some of the cats that I fostered, I brought in because they were supposed to be euthanized that day, and that's how I ended up getting sucked into taking so many. Nine is one of the most important ones. You're gonna fall in love with an animal despite how hard you try. And the first time I fell in love with the dog, um, was I had only been there I had been a surgical tech for a while but I had only been actually in the shelter for a week and I fell hardcore in love with the dog and tried to adopt her um, but the adoption didn't go through because she didn't get along with my dog but it's something that you're going to be looked at as being weak for falling in love with an animal but everyone does it regardless of how your coworkers judge you it's impossible to work there and to just completely shut off your emotions uh, the dog that's pictured below is named Magnum, and to this day, I love that dog with all of my heart, even though I didn't get to adopt him <laughs> because my mom said I couldn't. <laughs> but he was um, a seven year old mutt, American Bulldog mix. He was actually surrendered by his owner because they couldn't have pets anymore. And his owner would come in to check on him every now and then, make sure he was good. But he ended up getting adopted by a loving home. I can name four dogs off the top of my head that I tried to adopt, none of which I ended up adopting. Um, and I can't even tell you how many cats I tried to adopt. Um, I only ended up adopting, well, not only, but I ended up adopting three from the shelter while I worked there. And the very last um, thing that I learned was that it's okay to cry. Working in a shelter is absolutely the hardest thing that I've ever done. To this day, there are still things that I've seen that have affected me and to an extent, you get post-traumatic stress disorder from some of the things you see. Um, after I had left the shelter, I still found it difficult, and there were times where some of the images that I've seen popped back into my head. Some of the uh, euthanasias I've had to done came back to haunt me. Um, there was a day when we got 36 cats surrendered from one household. That's not the amount that were surrendered that day. That was from one place. The guy had, all of his cats were unspayed and neutered. They lived outside. All of them were sick and I had to euthanize every single one of them by myself. I had one of the dog people come over and help me restrain and it was horrible. And that was one of the days when I decided that it was time for me to leave. I had actually quit a week later uh, to go work at Banfield because I was unhappy with the 
the way the shelter had you know been functioning at the time and it had gone under new management and things just weren't ideal and I had already found out that I was accepted here so I knew that it was time for me to leave and get myself together before I came to vet school and get over some of the things I saw the dog that's pictured is the first dog I fell in love with Nina and I was absolutely in love with her she was in the shelter for seven months and the night I tried to adopt her she was supposed to be euthanized and I called my mom frantically and I said, I need you to bring the dogs to the shelter right now and do a meet and greet their euthanizing Nina. And my mom drove over at about 80 miles an hour and got there in 10 minutes with all of our dogs. And the meet and greet actually went very well for the fact that we had a Staffordshire Terrier mix who was badly abused um, and he was very bad with other dogs. He was actually great with her but he decided to lick her ear and she snipped at him and it was just enough to break skin on the nose and immediately they drug her back to the sleep room and euthanized her. And I was judged so harshly for crying that day and I really wondered if working in the shelter was right for me. And there were many more days that I cried. I cried just from being stressed out. I cried from the way people treated their animals. I cried from having to euthanize animals. And it's okay to do that because compassion fatigue is a real thing and it's important for you to let all those emotions out. So to end on a positive note, that's Murphy and he's adorable and he was adopted. Um, so that's a happy story. Not everything in the shelter is bad. You will have so many good experiences and it's the thing that made me know that this is what I wanna do. And even after all of that, I want to go into shelter medicine, even after all of the traumatic things I saw, because I know that that's the way I can make the most of a difference. Um, and I just want to remind everyone to please donate to your local shelter, volunteer, walk dogs, go socialize cats, uh, donate supplies if you can't donate money, and most importantly, adopt if you can, because adopting saves lives. You not only save the life of the animal you're adopting, you save the life of the animal that takes its place. Thank you.